Thank you for being here as well. Uh, my name is Steve McCrum, the Director of the Texas Department of Public Safety. Uh, with me today is the Deputy Director of Law Enforcement Operations. It's Colonel Lamar Beckworth right here. Uh, also with me today is the Chief and Assistant Director of the Texas Rangers, uh, Tony Leal, right here. Uh, next to him is uh, Tom Rocco. He's the Assistant Director of CID. Uh, next to Tom Rocco is our captain and the, the ranger captain in charge of this investigation, uh, J.D. Robertson. And to his left is our lead uh, ranger on this investigation, Chance Collins. And to the right of Colonel Beckworth is our assistant director of counterterrorism counter and intelligence, uh, John Jones. The purpose of this uh, conference is to, to solicit the public's help in uh, solving this mansion investigation. In October 2009, the Department of Public Safety assumed responsibility of this investigation. We also assumed custody of the evidence. That include all physical evidence and also thousands of hours of video surveillance tapes. In a moment, we'll show you three videos. Now, two of the videos the public has not seen. Now, we'll also provide that to you afterwards. And in fact, we want to make that available to the public through you and also on our web page. Now, since October of 2009, when we assumed responsibility of this investigation, we set up a DPS uh, task force led by the Texas Rangers. This, this task force has done the following. They enhanced the analog video surveillance, not just the one the public has seen, but the other two as well. Uh, from that enhancements, they also produced a forensic sketch, sketch by our forensic artist of the Texas Rangers, which you see to my left, to your right. They reviewed thousands of hours of videotapes from 11 different cameras. They also, and that's an important point, and it's our experience, whether you're working on an arson investigation or a counterterrorism investigation, is that subjects or lone actors surveil the target before they hit the target. So it's very important that you check not just the video surveillance afterwards, but beforehand. And they did that during the course of this thing. They also reviewed all the physical evidence, and they eliminated possible subjects in this investigation, which is also important. Importantly, they identified a suspicious vehicle on a video that was taken four days before the mansion fire on, on uh, June 8th. And uh, from 3,000 possible vehicles, they identified the one vehicle, also identified the owner, who we refer to as person of interest number one, and two other individuals in the vehicle that were referred to as persons of interest number two and number three. At least one of these persons of interest has been placed in the downtown area of Austin on the night of the fire. That's June 8, 2008. We also established a direct link with these individuals to an Austin-based anarchist group that was linked to the planned arson of the attack on the Republican National Convention in Minneapolis in September of 2008 using Molotov cocktails. At this time, I want to go through these, those videos, and we'll provide some comments on that. This is the enhanced video. For those who've been watching this location, go ahead and go through it. You'll be providing this as well. Now, from that is what we took this forensic art sketch. Also, want to show you what the public has not seen, and that's the actual individual throwing the Molotov cocktail. You see him running away. That's an important point that I'll let uh, Chief Leal follow up in a moment. Next is the forensic artist. Go ahead and leave it there for right now. Please go to the next. We we'll talked about you know, going through those thousands of hours of video surveillance. Watch this, four days before. Okay, we stopped it there with the first, you see the flash in the back? That's a camera shot, one or two <coughs> camera shots. Uh, what they're taking a picture of is the, the surveillance cameras at the governor's mansion. This is the wee hours on the January, excuse me, on June 4th. In fact, the time is up there. 
There was a second shot. He pulls away. As you can see from the display that we have up right there, you, know, you ought to you know, look at it and see the license plate number. Because it was an analog video, it's impossible to tell what that license plate number is. And again, you know, thanks to some, some hard work, they're able to eliminate you know, 3,000 different vehicles to get to that vehicle. Now, at this time, I'd like to go back to the video surveillance, if we can, of the individual. I think this is an important point. This is good enough, right there. Go ahead and bring it through. The point I want to make here, in fact, the individual throwing, the question is, is that investigators, you know, is the individual throwing the Molotov cocktail, the same individual captured here that we've showed you on the video? And uh, in fact, uh, Lieutenant uh, Collins, you please, uh, your expertise. Yes, sir. Uh, based on the different camera angles that we have. Come on out here, please. Come up here. Based on the different surveillance camera angles we have of the governor's mansion on the night of the fire, the different routes that the perpetrator would have taken to enter the grounds and exit the grounds, the clothing and physical description of the suspect, we do believe that that is the same person passing by the rear gate, um, that it is the same person that, that uh, set the fire. Thank you, Ray. The second point, an important point is, you know, why are we now releasing these two videos all right, and that have never been seen before, including the mansion video? And I'm going to have uh, uh, the chief of the Texas Rangers explain that if you would, Tony. There are a couple of points here. One is some of those videos have never been seen by anybody. Uh, previous to today, uh, no one knew about this Jeep, and we have tied that Jeep, as the director stated, uh, or the people who own that Jeep, uh, and that were driving that Jeep, uh, to the people that were ultimately prosecuted for the attempted arsons in Minnesota. I was previously assigned to the department's cold case squad, and I later commanded that squad. Uh, one of the members of that squad was Captain Jeff Robertson, who's here today. And all cases come to a place where you can no longer just follow new leads. And you have to look over everything that you've done before, everything that everyone else has done before, uh, all the evidence that you've had before, and see if there are other strategies that can be uh, imposed, uh, if there's something you missed, if there's something else to do. That's what happened here. Uh, we found 1,900 hours of uh, video that had not been seen before. That's when we came up on this Jeep and ID these individuals uh, who we linked back uh, to these other subjects. We want the public to closely look at this person who's running. The reason we want to do that is we want uh, someone, if they can recognize his gaits or mannerisms, the way he runs, the way he carries himself, you know, a casual observer will not know someone by merely looking at them. However, someone who knows someone well, someone who is a, a good friend, family member, or uh, in an intimate relationship with that person uh, can tell a person just by them walking away from them. Where I wouldn't know that person is uh, uh, my brother, or another person wouldn't know that's my brother, I can tell that that's my brother, or my friend, or somebody that I work with. So that's why we're releasing this uh, at this time. Thank you.